Well, would you, would you, it's person. Hey there, person. How you been? Hello there, person. Let's check in and look at what's new making the game. Wraith Binder. Wraith Binder has been, whoa. Oh my gosh, this is really fun stuff these uh, last few days, this last week or so. Um, taking all the elements that have been created over the last few months and putting them together into a cohesive whole. That's what this is. This last little push has been about. Making the first 15 minutes of this game fun. There's so much cool stuff added, but now it's fun. So let's check out how it's funner. More fun. The logo is cleaner. Look at that. That's a little more fun. Uh, it used to be a lot dirtier and not animated. So now it's animated and it's cleaner looking. Um, let's check a look at what else here. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh, check this out. The name is now um, bigger letters. <laughs> That's more fun. It used to be smaller letters. And you can type your name too. So if you're using the keyboard, you can actually type your name finally. Whoa. Quality of life improvement, but so cool. Check out, check out how fast I can type this. Whoa. Whoa. Yes is a pretty cool name. Let's name him Yes. Great band too. All right. Um. Yeah, Yes is gonna be like this. How about that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Um, this is something new here. We have planetary transitions. So as you're transitioning between each planet, um, which each planet is like a, a different mode of gameplay, really. So you got the planet where you go, you do your training. You got the planet where you um, do battle, PvP style. There's a co-op battle planet. There's a team battle planet. Uh, there's going to be a boss mode planet, that kind of stuff. So. Um, you notice right when we started, I'm starting on the ship, I've got nothing, no items, no credits, nothing. Uh, but we, the camera did this little transition where it, it opened up to this plank right here and opened the plank up. That's cool. Um, and the uh, light menu is offline at first, so when I come here to this light platform thing, that nothing happens. Same thing with the forge. This is disabled at first. And uh, also the helm, so the helm is now disabled. And all of these have custom artwork now too. So I did a lot of little modeling with um, with Magic of Voxel and drew some really cool, fun stuff for those. And uh, so let's um, let's just go to this training mode. Um, the training mode is a lot more fun now too because it focuses on combat first. So you can go in here and uh, you pick up your your uh, weapon and you learn how to use your shield. And let's, we'll go ahead and walk through all this. Um, but the the plan is to make this even even more uh, better. So, um, right, so you pick up your weapon. Tells you to use your blade to harvest matter points. So it kind of skips over what I used to basically take of the, the approach that it was this training mode where it was meant for like the most noob of noob players ever now it's more of like okay you know what it's probably not gonna be the most noob of noob players ever that's gonna play this people are gonna understand how to walk people are probably gonna intuitively understand what hit points are uh, so let's just focus on what's fun right let's focus on the fun part here and um, and forget all the, the simple things like oh you can when you take damage you lose hit points stuff like that right let's focus on what's fun so, uh, so here we've got another uh, little gate mechanism where you have to level up and get your shield. So it tells you press W to gain your ability and you get your ability for shield and that opens up this gate. And then here, and another one is says you have to block the arrows using your shield. So you have to figure out how to use your shield and time it just right. And uh, the arrows fly a lot slower than they normally do in regular battle here. And also you can um, keep doing this too for a minute. Like if you really want to practice using your shield, get that timing down just right, you can sit there and do that for a minute because the guardian doesn't blow up anymore. Uh, now we move on to this. You can see that, oh, we get healed from these little mender things a little bit. And boom, we have the objective of fighting a single other bot right here. Um, so this is where uh, the tutorial is going to end right here when I beat this bot, but my plan is for this training mode, this training world here, to continue on a little bit. So first you fight this guy, 
this, this bot, this person right here, and they will then become your wraith, and you'll go on, you'll learn how to use your bow weapon, and you'll go ahead and fight two other bots that are on a team together. So you and the bot that's on your team, because of your wraith, will fight another um, bot and another bot's wraith, and then you kind of get the whole concept of wraith binder at that point. Like you've you bound a wraith, you fought sort of against an, a group of other people, and that's kind of the core of what wraith binder is about. So here's one of the uh, one of my oh, favorite things that I did this week. This is really fun to do, but um, basically it it turns all these uh, things online. So remember the forge was offline at first. We're gonna pick this up. We've got some credits now, and the forge is gonna come online. So the camera pans over to the forge, does a little animation, cool sound effect, and the forge is now online. It's kind of really rewarding, right? Like, whoa, that's cool. What's that? What's the forge? Let's go play with that. Got the coordinates to a new planet. The helm's gonna come online. And same thing for the light menu. So we can pick up this little bit of experience and the light will come online. I'm trying to think of a better name for light. Light is a little bit too abstract. It's not visual. I can't just create a little model of light, right? I could, and I, I could create a little glowing ball, but still, that's vague. Like, how can I make that a little bit more concrete? There's gotta be something. I'm thinking of maybe renaming it to an altar. But then I don't know what you would get for that blood. I don't know. But anyways, um, you can use your light menu, and um, I'm, I'm starting to reorganize this too. So what I want to do with the, with the light points is to make this character progression work so that you unlock hit points, and then you can access the other tabs. So like it, it basically, some of these upgrades you'll be able to make to your character, you'll not be able to do it first, right? You should not be able to just go in here and get um, tab 4's hit point stealing, you know, right away. That's way overpowered for a level 1 player. And same thing with these fire chances and ice chances. These things are really powerful upgrades. You get a percentage chance to do fire damage, which is really powerful in battle. So, anyways, lots of work to do here to kind of make this more like a skill tree rather than just sort of a list of um, things that you can upgrade. So let's close the, the, the light menu for now. And we can go over to the forge. I showed this in the last video, uh, but there's one little new um, uh, upgrade here, and that's that it counts up your currency. And so if I go ahead and buy some, some uh, currency here, this is if, still kind of on the fence whether, the, whether Wraithbinder is gonna be a free to start or whether it's a premium game. Uh, but anyways, if it is a free to start game, or free to play game, then there'll be something like this, like Wraith Rings, where you can buy rings, and then you can use rings and your in-game currency of gold credits to buy stuff. So your gold, your gold credits you earn from battles, there's no way to ever purchase them. And then your rings are only purchasable with real money. So some of your items are gonna be, the, basically, the, the core of it all is that anything you can ever buy with real money is not going to affect your gameplay whatsoever. It'll be like a cloak that does nothing at all to your game, right? It's, it costs money, but it doesn't actually affect your gameplay. So um, so that's that's uh, that's cool. we got the forge online now, and then we also have the helm. So this is where we're going to do this uh, planetary transition. The helm menu now shows the planet that you're going to warp to. And I think the next upgrade I'm going to make here is that it will you'll be able to select the planet, and then it will tell you a little bit more about the planet planet's coordinates, maybe a little bit of backstory, but also more importantly, what is going to happen when you travel there? Like, is this a PvP planet? Is this a, a, a boss planet? Is this a team battle planet? Is it co-op? What the heck is going to happen when I travel to this planet? Um, so, for now though, we've just got this transition. And the plant comes out, and there, we're on the planet Vixon now, where we can go and do some PvP battles. So here's a, um, we'll go to this little thingy here, this, this is also going to be cooler, 
I'm thinking of something yeah. that like. So the 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 last transition was some big doors that opened up. You open the, these big doors open up, and you go into the train world. That was something where you would kneel at some kind of like altar, I guess, and uh, and it would teleport you into the battle. Oh, what would happen this time? Oh, this is this bug I've been chasing, but I haven't been able to catch it by the tail quite yet. But it doesn't affect the game in release mode, so that's okay. Only in debug mode it, it does this assertion failure. Basically what's happening is it's trying to load this model from the cache and it can't. So anyways, um, so there you have it. That's what's new, making the game Wraithbinder. Um, man, this is a really, really cool point. I think of making video games kind of like climbing mountains because I love climbing mountains. And, um, and this is the point where you get halfway up the mountain or so and you look and you see some incredible vista. Finally, this huge landscape appears before you and you're like you come out of the tree line you're like wow look how far i've climbed that's kind of what this is like making making wraith binder right now it's like whoa i could finally see what this game is going to be like i can finally see how it's going to be fun i can finally see how the my my character is going to progress that's one of my favorite things in video games is character progression is like seeing the f my efforts turn into fruit and and uh the rewards of reaping those victories so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching it. And um, we'll catch you next time. All right, person? See you.